And so it continues. Now, Donald Trump has entered in his not guilty plea in Fulton County, but he will not appear for arraignment. We have an image of his sworn statement saying that he will plead not guilty. And as this is going down on the other side, there is a conversation about potentially asking the question, should we inquire as to whether or not Biden should be impeached? I love the Republican Party. That was sarcasm in case you didn't notice. But there is talk now that Joe Biden may actually be impeached after Labor Day. I'm not going to hold my breath and I want to see a real clear case for impeachment. Now, we know about Burisma. We know about these illicit business dealings. We know about Joe Biden's aliases. But were these things undertaken as he is currently president? More importantly, I believe the impeachment against Joe Biden should focus on his instructing A.G. Merrick Garland to indict Donald Trump. This is overt election interference, asking the DOJ to dig up dirt on his political opponent so that he can cheat in an election. Now, we don't know what exactly is going to happen with 2024, but looking at the data and the favorability, I want to go through some of these polls. And there's more information that will be tacked on to the segment. It's not just about Trump's guilty plea or Biden being impeached, but the, the real economic impacts of what Biden is doing and what's to come. Biden's forgiving more student loan debt. He doesn't have the authority to do it, but he's trying anyway. And there are questions about whether or not when student loan repayments kick back in and all of a sudden all of these young people have to start paying money that they don't have, will that lead to a crisis? We're now hearing that auto loans and credit card debt are going, uh, delinquencies are on the rise. What this means is, for one, uh, consider it a warning. The market may be in trouble, but you know, and that means like prices will go up and jobs will evaporate. But more importantly, it means that Joe Biden might just lose on the economic issues alone. But let's get started here with Donald Trump entering his not guilty plea. Before we do, my friends, head over to TimCast.com. <clears throat> Click TimCast IRL X Miami in the menu bar and get your tickets to our event Featuring Donald Trump Jr., Patrick Bet David, Matt Gates, and Luke Rutkowski. <clears throat> Excuse me. This event will be October 6th. Uh, it will go from 6 to 10.30 p.m. It will be uh, live. We're going to have a pre-show only in person. Then we're going to do IRL live with these wonderful gentlemen. And then afterwards, we'll have a Q&A session with the audience. There's going to be swag that we're going to give out. The event is sponsored by Public Square. We are huge fans of Public Square help build that parallel economy and push back against people who hate your values. And we hope to see you in Miami. It's going to be awesome. We're also planning a uh, TimCast Elite Members Meetup, which we'll have more information on at the very last minute. So if you're an elite member who finds yourself in town, we're going to keep these details close to the chest uh, to prevent you know stalkers and weirdos, but uh, just have something cool for you guys. Let's read the news from CBS News. Former President Donald Trump has entered a not guilty plea to 13 Georgia felony counts related to an alleged scheme to overturn the election. An attorney for Trump filed a waiver of arraignment in a Fulton County court Thursday. Several others among Trump's 18 co-defendants in the case have also fire, filed similar waivers and entered not guilty pleas. Now we have the image in question, Ed Krasenstein, on Twitter with his engagement driving post, has the images, Trump's uh, waiver. Let's check it out. State of Georgia v. Donald Trump, President Trump's entry of plea of not guilty and waiver of appearance at arraignment. I, President Donald Trump, hereby acknowledge that I am the defendant named above and I received a copy of the indictment in this case. I understand I have a right to I have the right to appear personally at my arraignment and that I have the right to have the indictment read to me in open court. I've discussed the charges in the indictment of this waiver of appearance at arraignment with my attorney, Stephen H. Sato, and I fully understand the nature of the offenses charged and my right to appear at arraignment. Understanding my rights, I do hereby freely and voluntarily waive my right to be present at my arraignment on the indictment and my right to have it read to me in open court. As evidenced by my signature below, I do hereby waive formal arraignment and enter my plea of not guilty to the indictment in this case. Well, there you go, my friends. That's where we are currently at. <clears throat> Ed Krasenstein asks, breaking. Donald Trump has just pleaded not guilty in the Fulton County, Georgia election interference case. He waived arraignment. Ultimately, we should presume Trump is innocent until proven guilty. If he's proven guilty, we should respect the rule of law. No one is above the rule of law. No one should escape it just because they were once president. Agree? Uh, 
Yes and no. I believe that impeachment must come first. That's the, the general consensus that a president will take unilateral authority. I mean, the president is the head of the executive branch. So technically, in many ways, they're above the law. But that doesn't mean that they can't be held accountable. It means that presidents often do things we don't like, but they don't get arrested for it. If the president commits a crime, he must be impeached and convicted. And then we can question criminal charges. In the case of Donald Trump, if it is so that what he did constitute a crime, he needs to be impeached. Yes, you can impeach after the fact because he did this during his uh, uh, as an executive officer of the United States. If you look at it, let's, let's play this game. Donald Trump is uh, sitting in the White House when he gets word that there is a, a federal election for which he is not a part of. And there's questions of fraud. Donald Trump then goes to them and says, I want you to look into this X, Y and Z, talks to his lawyers, talk to talks to the assistant, uh, the uh, acting assistant attorney general, as well as his chief of staff and says, what do we do here? We got to get to the bottom of this. They would not be charging him with a crime. That would be his official duties as an executive in this country to investigate crime, right? To instruct the DOJ and to seek legal advice as to how we remedy potential voter fraud or election issues. In this instance, it just so happens that he was part of this election as well. But I still argue that if he's acting in his official, his official duties, I believe Mark Meadows is making this exact argument, in which case he needs to be impeached and convicted. So do it. Instead, state charges. They're playing dirty. It's a dirty game that they are playing. We'll see where that ends up in the meantime. On the other side, there's questions of whether or not Joe Biden will be impeached. And I love the language used by the GOP, because for the past several weeks, the questions have been, should we ask the question, should we launch an inquiry into impeachment? I love the absurdity of the lies they push. And then the media report will report something like impeachment talk has begun. And it's like, oh, OK, what they're really saying is they'll convene a meeting and they'll ask among themselves, should we investigate? an impeachment. And upon the conclusion of that investigation, then we ask, should he be impeached? It's just nonsense. But you get it. But here's where we're currently at. The conversation is at least slowly advancing. And to be fair, I want to be hopeful. Perhaps the real issue is that the GOP is trying to wait as long as possible. You look at what Democrats did. They could have brought these charges against Trump two years ago. They did not do it. They waited until the election cycle begins so that they can have Trump Brought, dragged into a trial right before Super Tuesday. They want to try to get, try to get his name removed from the ballot. The Hill reports Rep. Jim Jordan, the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, said Tuesday that the chances of an impeachment inquiry into President Biden and his family are looking more and more likely. I do think it's looking more and more likely that we move to what's what's called an impeachment inquiry phase of our oversight investigations relative to the Bidens, and frankly, the Department of Justice. Jordan. Uh, I also a House Oversight Committee member said on Fox Across America with Jimmy Fila on Sunday. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy said in Fox News that an impeachment inquiry is a natural step forward after the House Republican led investigations into the Biden family. So if you look at all the information we have been able to gather so far, it is a natural step forward that you would have to get to an impeachment inquiry. They have nothing. Uh, so, yes, House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries criticized Republicans, saying, they have nothing to show for uh, for their majority throughout the year, Jeffrey said on CNN. And so as a natural consequence of that, they just continue to take orders from Trump. All right, you guys ready? Civil War. All right. I said it. I hope you guys were already is a little early, perhaps to be drinking. But let me explain. There are a lot of arguments to be made about what can lead to a civil war. And I'm kind of just saying it because it's the meme at this point. But what I mean to say is, both political parties don't have much to campaign on. We were mentioning this last night that if you're not engaged in the culture wars, you're not engaged in politics because the culture wars are politics. And many of us on YouTube over the past 10 years warned this would be the case, that it may be 20 something, you know, 10 years ago, it's like you may be 26, 27 years old. But if you're seeing this stuff right now, it will be mainstream politics in 10 years because this is where we're at and our minds aren't being changed. Our minds are already here. So understand this. The Democrats aren't campaigning on anything. They're just saying Trump bad. The Republicans right now can't really do much with a thin majority other than investigations and impeachment, which means this election comes down to one thing. Not so much the economy, not so much gas prices, but increasingly 
How much do you hate the other guy? How much are you willing to go up against them? And when you have rival political factions, or political umbrellas with, dis- with, with disparate factions between them, when the only thing your politics is, is, uh, is, are we against them? Now, it's one thing when we can disagree on abortion and stuff like that and taxes, but we all agreed we were a country. It's another thing when one side says the other side is evil. And that's what everyone is doing. Now, of course, you may say to yourself, but I'm on the right side and I'm good. And yeah, fine. So be it. Everybody thinks they're the good guys. Obviously, I and most of you probably assume that the Democrats are evil, trying to grasp power and desperate to stop Trump from winning. My view is more so Trump's not a perfect guy. He's actually bad for a lot of reasons. He's crass. He's crude. And there's great reasons to hate him. But if the people vote for him, then he's the president. Have a nice day. That's called duly electing a representative. But the Democrats don't like the idea because they're shocked and offended. As better men, they should be the ones telling you how to live. They'll lie, cheat and steal to get there. So they don't want Trump to win and they will have him removed. In the meantime, you have an actual corrupt Joe Biden in the White House telling Merrick Garland to go after Trump. That is the key reason he should be impeached. Now, the White House warns Biden impeachment will backfire. Yeah, I really don't think so. I got to be honest. People may not like Donald Trump and you can take that one to the bank. Don't care. But yeah, ain't nobody going to be defending Joe Biden. Joe Biden's going to be impeached and the Democrats on the left are going to be like, OK, sure. There ain't nothing to get. Don't get me wrong. There's going to be neolibs and they're going to defend them. And the Krasensteins will defend Joe Biden and say it's an unjust political persecution. While at the same time, they're like, but Donald Trump is being indicted. Yes, yeah, spare me, dude. You want to play this game? We play this game. The question actually is whether or not there will be a real indictment of this guy. In this tweet from ALX, he says, James Comer says he is pretty confident that the House will launch an impeachment inquiry into Joe Biden after Labor Day and that he feels that everyone in the Republican conference sees now they have no choice but to move forward. Let me play that clip. Biden after Labor Day? Let's start over. Oh, I'm sorry. I totally screwed that one up. I got to set the audio properly. You probably noticed it was very quiet. You see, I'm just what am I doing over here? Chair Comer will. Let's move on to this. Will House Republicans launch an impeachment inquiry into President Biden after Labor Day? I feel pretty confident we will. I had a long conversation with Speaker McCarthy yesterday. You look at what we found just in the last 10 days with respect to not only the president having pseudonyms in 5,400 emails, but also copying his son and some of them pertaining to Ukraine. That ties Joe Biden to Hunter Biden to firing the prosecutor for no good reason in Ukraine, only to save Hunter from uh, being investigated for corruption in Ukraine. We also have learned that uh, Hunter Biden flew with his father on Air Force Two 15 times wow. at least. Uh, this hasn't been uh, something that Joe Biden has admitted to in the past. He's only said a few times did his son fly on Air Force Two. So the evidence continues to pile in. And one reason that uh, that we've waited thus this long on impeachment inquiry is to make sure that we had Uh, as much evidence as possible. And getting this evidence is like pulling teeth. No one in the Biden orbit is cooperating with us. The government is obstructing, but yet we're still able to find more evidence. And I think that everyone in the Republican conference sees now that we have no choice but to move towards impeachment inquiry. No choice but to move forward. Well, we will see. We have this story from a couple days ago. McCarthy starts to plot Biden impeachment strategy while GOP skeptics remain. I believe that the appropriate impeachment uh, inquiry should focus on the indictment of Donald Trump at the federal level. This uh, takes out two birds with one stone. Now, uh, far be it for me, I'm not a legal expert nor a political expert. I'm just some dude who reads articles online and complains about things. Fair point. But uh, here's the way I see it. And any of you comment below, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure some of you actually understand the law better than I do. If the Republicans launch an uh, investigation into the federal indictment of Donald Trump, And we know from the New York Times that Joe Biden met with Merrick Garland and told him, as per the reporting, to go after Trump. This looks like you have grounds for impeachment on the weaponization of government. This will strike at the heart of the indictments against Trump, which can quash them. But I don't know if the Republicans want to do that because they don't like Trump. But it also allows you to impeach Joe Biden for effectively the same thing they did to Donald Trump with Ukraine gate. 
You say Joe Biden instructed the DOJ to dig up dirt on Trump using novel legal theories to try and win in 2024. And that's it. That's your grounds for impeachment. And of course, he's not going to be convicted, but you do it anyway. I'm not convinced that you are going to have a successful impeachment if you're going after Joe Biden on things he did as vice president. Perhaps the impeachment will be of his tenure as vice president because you can be impeached after the fact. OK, then you can go for criminal charges somewhere else. Fine, do it. I'll take whatever. But I think right now at the federal level, the appropriate move would probably be this, this digging up dirt on his political opponent in much the same way as Ukraine gate. Now, we take a look over at the civics favorability. I like this. You can see that uh, Joe Biden, 53 disapprove, 38 approve with 394,000 responses. And Donald Trump with 353,000 responses, 58 unfavorable, 36 favorable. So to be fair, Trump ain't doing as uh, as well as Joe Biden, but it ain't saying much. Joe Biden's favorability, his approval rating is 38 and Trump's favorability is 36. So uh, I'm sorry, it's fairly neck and neck. And it's going to be really interesting to see how this ends up playing out as we move forward. Take a look at this from Josh Kroshar. New AP NORC poll, a whopping 77% of Americans, 69% of Democrats say Biden is too old to effectively serve another four-year term as president. That's going to play a role. And then, of course, I'd like you to just to consider, I probably should have saved this one for last, but I want to get to the economic stuff. Consider. You've got the DOJ not going after Donald Trump, I'm sorry, going after Elon Musk. And you have these pro-life activists who engage in a sit-in facing 11 years in prison. Sort of it says they're going after everyone. This isn't going to stop. More letters aren't going to stop this. Americans voted to give the GOP a House majority. It's time for Speaker McCarthy to use it. Agreed. And here we go, baby. Biden cancels $72 million in student loan debt for borrowers who went to for-profit Ashford University. Now, I don't care all that much about this particular store, but I can tell you that 72 million ain't doing nothing to the trillion plus dollars in student loan debt that is currently on the books. In the next couple of weeks, we are going to see student loan repayments begin. Many of these young people who are already struggling to buy groceries are going to be punched in the gut by this shift. Oh, boy. So what's going to happen? Default. I, I. I, this, I don't know what you do. I mean, is this going to be on par with the 2008 crisis? If it is, Trump wins. I mean, if the economy gets really, really bad, Biden can't hold on. Maybe they'll start a war or something. Hey, Tucker Carlson said that. But think about this. When they restart student loan repay, uh, payments and all of these 26 to 30 year olds have to start paying back their student loans for the first time in like, what, three years? They're not going to be able to. And they're going to say, I'm already living paycheck to paycheck. I'm not going to send money into a void. Because as for, as for right now, repaying student loan debt is so far out of their lives. What they're thinking about is rent, gas, and food. And I tell you what they're going to choose. If I don't have gas, I can't go to work. If I don't pay the rent, I got nowhere to live. And if I don't buy food, I ain't eating. So I'm not going to send money to a debt. Go for it. And then what happens? skyrocketing student loan delinquencies, snapping like a dam breaking. Now, I don't know what that means because the student loan system is weird as it is, but maybe it crushes the academic economy. Universities crumble. All of a sudden, people can't get student loans anymore. They can't go to schools. We're going to get a wave of academic jobs collapse, collapsing. And then who knows? I don't know how that ultimately ties to, to the greater economy. I'm not Michael Burry. I'm not reading about this, but hey, Michael Burry made a big bet against the U.S. economy. And perhaps it's because he's looking at student loan debt. Perhaps it's because he asked the exact same question. When you look at the big short on the housing market, many people saw this coming and they made a lot of money off it. Billions even. They said housing loans, mortgages are being given out to people with garbage credit. They're not going to pay these things back. These variable rate mortgages are going to sky, the, uh, the payments are going to skyrocket. Then we'll be able to afford them. So what happens? Delinquencies go through the roof. People stop paying for their houses. They delinquencies, like as I mentioned, and then the mortgage backed securities collapse. And then uh, one by one, the system starts crumbling. What about student loan debt? Same thing. 
You've got someone like Michael Burry, I imagine, saying they're giving out student loans to anyone, regardless of credit, under the assumption that once you get a degree, you get a job. But there's no jobs now for these people with degrees and wages are stagnant. They're going to get out of college and they're not going to pay these debts back. The system will crumble. And that's supposed to kick, kick, uh, kick back on in a couple weeks. Oh, boy. I hope you're ready. Take a look at this tweet from Wall Street Silver. Delinquencies are going higher. Most, more Americans are falling behind on their car loan and credit payments. The, uh, more than any time in the past decade, a troubling signal of consumer stress as higher prices and rising borrowing costs are squeezing household budgets. And you can thank funding war in Ukraine. That's right. Drives prices higher. Delinquencies have started to spike. Now, it looks like they went down. That's probably the pandemic. Consumer loans, credit cards, auto loans. I imagine this uh, next couple of months is going to get rowdy. And then kicking off the 2024 cycle, it's going to get bonkers. Man, they're going to start banning people, demonetizing people. They are going to throw everything and the kitchen sink in order to stop Donald Trump. So I hope you're all ready for some interesting times. May you live in them. To be fair, if you take a look at the 2008 crisis, delinquencies for consumer loans are up 10 percent. Right now, they're currently resting above 5 percent. Go watch the big short, you know, because there's that scene where it's like delinquencies are now around 4 percent. No one thought this could happen. And if it reaches eight, we're in trouble. We're at 5.5 and rising. This will get interesting. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.